confounding and effect modification in epidemiology and biostats. My name is Dr. Wahab Fazal and let us get into it. So what is confounding variable? We'll understand that with the help of an example. Let's say there's a researcher and he or she is convinced that alcohol use leads to lung cancer. She's convinced that alcohol use leads to lung cancer. But the problem is that the majority of alcohol users also use something else on the side and that's smoking. Majority, a lot of alcohol users also smoke. And the problem is that smoking is also linked. As I said, alcohol use is linked to alcohol use and lung cancer. And then when you really look into it, is that all of the alcohol use is not in fact causing the lung cancer. It was the smoking on the side which was causing the lung cancer. It was not the alcohol use. People were using alcohol, but on the side, they were also smoking. And it was that effect which was leading actually to lung cancer. And this researcher was wrong in her assumption that this was the relationship between alcohol and lung cancer. Why? Because smoking was the third factor that was hiding in the background. Smoking was the confounder that was leading to this false association in this researcher's mind that somehow alcohol users are getting lung cancer. Well, that is true. Alcohol users are getting lung cancer. It's because they were also smoking and that third factor of smoking was hiding behind our eyes, hiding in front of our eyes somewhere, somewhere in the background. And we didn't know that it was smoking. In fact, it was linked to both of the exposure and the outcome, the exposure and the outcome, the third factor, which explains the whole relationship. Let's take another example. Let's say uh, there is a researcher uh, named uh, McPherson and McPherson is convinced that partying leads to heart disease. That partying, there are a lot of partying. If you party too much, if you have too much fun, it leads to heart disease. Now, it was not partying itself. It was the, the act of smoking. People who smoke, well, smoking is not great for your heart as well. Smoking is not great for your heart. The arteries get clogged up. It causes coronary artery disease. So smoking, people when they go to parties, they smoke a lot as well. And smoking leads to heart disease. So this third factor, in fact, again, the factor of smoking is linked both to the exposure and the outcome. It was not the act of partying too much. You can have a party in a great way, in a great healthy manner, and then you won't get heart disease. You could say that this is a party marathon, which is very good for your heart disease. The act of partying was not leading to heart disease, but it was the act of smoking. And this is the third factor, which is, which is hiding somewhere in the background. And that is confounded. So how you will explain confounded is that there is no relationship between the exposure and the outcome. We know that alcohol use is not causing the lung cancer. It is this third variable which is hiding in the background, which is causing this false association to develop in our minds. This is confounders and confounders are very, very bad for research. Confounders are very, very bad. Somehow you have made this association in your head that my dog uh, loves to pa uh, loves to let's say uh, go to this specific park but then you end up finding out that this specific park has a lot of dog food that is hiding somewhere in the grass that is a confounder when you find the actual factor which is hiding somewhere in the background that is the confounder let's talk about effect modification and how that is different from confounding so now let us say you want to study the association between smoking and lung cancer. And we know that this association exists. Actually, this association exists actually in real life that smoking does in fact lead to lung cancer. But what if you're a coal worker? What will that do to your lungs? We know that being a coal worker is, and inhaling that amount of coal is bad for your lungs too. What, what, does, what does it do? Well, it augments, it, it attaches itself to this relationship of causing lung cancer. What happens? This relationship gets even bigger. So the act of smoking becomes even more harmful now that you're a coal worker. Now you're a coal worker whose occupation itself is bad for your lungs. And then you're also smoking. What have you done? You have made this relationship even worse. And your risk of lung cancer becomes much, much worse. 
that is effect modification so effect modification is that when the relationship between outcome and exposure actually existed in the first place but the third thing which is being a coal worker actually enhanced or decreased that relationship let's take another example to understand it let we know that sun exposure specifically in fair skinned and light skinned individuals can lead to sunburns and what do you do when when you go out in the sun well you apply sunscreen you apply sunscreen and what does sunscreen do it decreases your risk of getting sunburns so sunscreen effectively in this case is an effect modifier it decreases the effect of sun exposure by being the third factor so what's the difference here well the sun exposure was in fact leading to sunburns which was not in the case of confounding the outcome and the exposure were not related to each other now i have two practice questions for you which will test these concepts and both have two hidden concepts in these questions as well because these are the ways in which uh, your examiner will ask you these questions so a 45 year old man presents to your clinic for a routine health evaluation he has no significant past medical history but reports drinking four cups of coffee daily recent studies have suggested a potential association between increased coffee consumption and risk of heart disease so i know this slide is very text heavy and there's a lot of things happening in this question but this is for a reason this is usually the way test takers will uh, uh, test writers will write these questions they'll write a very long winded speech kind of question but the question itself will be very easy once you get the gist of it this is what specifically happens in biostat the question will be very very long but the question will be very easy once you get it right so the second paragraph of this question is what is hiding the actual uh is hiding the whole paradigm however when the data was stratified by smoking status the association was found to be significant only in smokers while no association was observed in non smokers so this is this is usually the problem that comes up in biostats question that students go and they have watched this video and they have studied their book and they have written but how they do is that they will write a very long winded they will write and then they will use complicated words of like stratification by smoking status and association was significant and stuff like that they will use very complicated words to confuse you and you end up being confused right that's the entire plan of the examiner but let's not be confused let's try to dissect this second part second uh, so what they want to let's the simple association they want to establish is whether coffee consumption causes an increased risk of heart disease but what does the second paragraph say they said that originally they had these two groups coffee consumers and not coffee consumers and they were observing this relationship that uh, people who were having a lot of coffee were getting heart disease but when they did the same grouping based on smoking and uh, non smoking status and this was irrelevant of their coffee consumption basically they matched the groups based on their coffee status they said both of both the groups drink the same amount of coffee and they they noticed that the entire effect stratification by smoking status means that the entire effect was the association was found to be significant only in smokers was noticed in smokers basically it was only smokers who were getting the heart disease and irrelevant of their coffee drinking status this was entirely based on their smoking status so what did we just study if there is no relationship between the outcome and the exposure and the real thing which is smoking is hiding in the background what is that what is that so what is the answer and that is the entire gist of this question while no association was observed in non smokers basically they're saying that if you make coffee drinking irrelevant and you focus only on smoking and non smoking it is in fact this factor which is causing all of this relationship between coffee consumption and increased risk of heart disease people who have a lot of coffee or also smoking a lot which of the following best describes the role of finding in this study so let us look at the options is it information bias well i have a complete video on information bias and its subtypes and we know that information bias deals with the measurement reporting and interpretation of the data and how you conducted the study itself so i don't think it's information bias is it recall bias a uh, recall bias is a subtype of information bias so if it's not this mother term it can't be recall bias selection bias is again a mother term i have a complete video on selection bias what is selection bias when the sample that you have at any point the, during the study is different than the population that it's supposed to represent and we have no such problem in this study now we have the two things that we are confused about does now i want you to answer this question does the relationship between coffee consumption 
and heart disease actually exist we just studied that when when we grouped the people based on their smoking and non smoking status and we just ignored the coffee consumption in fact there was no relationship here in the first place it was all due to that third factor of smoking which was causing both of these people who were drinking a lot of coffee were also smoking and it was smoking that was leading to heart disease so our answer in this case is a confounding why because no such relationship exists between coffee consumption and heart disease it was all the third factor which was hiding in the background and smoking and that's why they will write this complicated stuff in your question if you stratified on the basis of confounder no relationship exists between exposure and outcome what they basically want you to say is just pick confounder just know that there's a confounder hiding in the background and there is no effect modifier it's just the confounder there is a third factor that is causing the whole relationship so what's the tidbit that we want to learn from this from this example grouping based on the presence or absence of confounders removes the whole association between the things that we were thinking what does this mean basically as soon as we made groups on the basis of smoking and no smoking and we made coffee consumption similar between the two groups the effect vanished the effect vanished we removed the false association that we had made let us look at the second concept and the second practice question a 62 year old woman who is enrolled in a study investigating the effects of physical activity on reducing cardiovascular events the study finds that regular uh, physical activity significantly reduces the risk of cardiovascular events in participants under the age of 50 but the effect is less pronounced in patients age 50 or older first of all i want you to understand is there an actual relationship between physical activity and the risk of cardiovascular events well yes if you do a lot of physical if you do good physical activity you will reduce the risk of cardiovascular effects so the effect actually exists the relationship actually exists in participants under the age of 50 but the effect is less pronounced in patients age 50 or older so the age of the participants is causing this effect of physical activity to to decrease right i'm not going to answer the question but you get the gist further analysis shows that this pattern is consistent even after matching of other factors like diet smoking or baseline blood pressure levels so this is very important there is a reason i put this here i first i told you about the concept of stratification based on confounding then in this uh, question we'll talk about matching so what is matching so one of the ways you control confounding is that there is no factor hiding in the background right of your exposed group and your unexposed group is that except the factor that you're looking at you make the two groups very similar like my two hands if there is some sort of difference in this one hand which is like this this bent finger is causing the side effect you make both of the fingers bent so the both of the groups are entirely similar to each other except physical activity if you are concerned that let's say smoking status might might be causing uh, more cardiovascular events so you make sure both of the people are either smokers or non smoker the, the both of the people are either smokers and both of the groups are smokers right if you are taking non smokers then both of the groups are matched in their smoking status or it's entirely random it's entirely random so this is one of the techniques you use to control for confounders you match the two groups in all other factors except the factor that we are looking at so the, what they have told us is that there is no other confounder we have matched the two groups for every other factor other factors like diet smoking or baseline blood pressure so what they are basically stating is our study is great we have matched the two groups for any confounding and there is no confounding right so which of the following best describes the finding in this study so let's start from this part our findings are due to selection bias as i said selection bias is a type uh, selection i talked about selection bias in detail in my previous video uh, and it's not selection bias because selection bias your sample is not representative of the population which is not true they chose a good sample we know that these findings reflect recall bias then then we can just focus on information bias if it's not information bias it's not recall bias as i told earlier information bias is either measurement reporting and interpretation of data i don't think it's a problem with either of these so it's not information bias recall bias is a subtype of information bias so it's not this either go and watch my previous video on information bias if you haven't watched it before watch my video on selection bias if you haven't watched it before and then we have our two main problems confounder or effect modifier so is there an actual relationship between physical activity 
and cardiovascular uh, cardiovascular disease we know that if you increase the physical activity you decrease the cardiovascular disease there and what was the third thing what was the third thing what they mean by this is what was the role of age we know that if the person if, as the person age increases this effect starts to become smaller and smaller this whole thing starts to become smaller so as we know if this relationship exists in the first place this is an effect modifier and not confounding because we know that physical activity causes a decreased risk of cardiovascular disease and being increased age decreased that whole thing so basically age is an effect modifier so what's what's something we want to learn from this question it's that when you control for confounders when you control for confounders how do you control for confounders you match the two groups in all other factors except the confounders with techniques like matching and crossover protocols i talked about crossover protocols in my previous video on study designs i just told you about matching take away from this lecture so what did we actually study so we studied confounder confounder is the third factor that explains the whole false association meaning the association between the outcome and the exposure actually does not exist then we studied effect modification it's the third factor that increases or decreases the observed actual relationship between the outcome and the exposure then we studied about two methods of controlling confounders we talked about stratification which is basically grouping on the basis of confounder being present or not removes the whole association the false association that we observed then matching basically making the two groups extremely similar to each other in all other factors except the one that we are studying removes the confounders then there's a third technique called crossover grouping we don't need to go in the detail of that but i talked about crossover grouping in a previous video so thank you so much for watching this video and as always every day is a new beginning